Okay, Mr. Ware here, back with the second part. In 5.5 five here, we're going to go to the circular plate here. And this circular plate has some instructions here, but it leaves out some like it on this particular drawing right here. It doesn't even give any dimension for that particular hole right there. It doesn't tell you how to get these points across really well. There's two ways of doing it, and I'm going to show you both. But this is the simple way using the circular pattern and down here further in the instructions are the actual step by step by step by step instructions of how to do each and every single hole and as you see if i scroll down we get around to that last hole where they don't give you any instruction up up top but they give it to you here it's a clearance hole it's a special type of hole where you need to know this sort of information i'll tell you how to get that to come out because you got to select instead of a simple hole you got to select this and then this bottom information shows up where you can match that information there but okay let's go through this nice and slow it's going to take a minute here because these things are not uh very readily handling easily to see but we'll step through it so you see here i have a four inch diameter um plate uh, circular plate here with a two and a half inch diameter let's call it construction line sort of sort of thing we're going to do right here All right and it's going to be extruded one and a half inches out so let's start with a part over here for that and then let's select my 2d sketch only once remember the xy plane back here and let's start with that four inch diameter okay I'll just type four and hit enter and then scroll away with my scroll bar so I can see that a little bit better. And then come over here, move that out of the way, and do it again and go two and a half inches. That has to turn green, then I'm right on the center, and they both share the same center axis point. That's important. 2.5 and hit enter. Then I'll right click and I'll say OK, which exits me out of that feature. Now, I want to highlight this line here because I want this to be turned into a construction line right there, right? There we go. And then I click here and, cl and I click off there so that, oops, there we go. Everything's clicked off and I hit my escape key. That's the easier way to do it on the keyboard. And I have my four, my two and a half inches for my placement here. Now, the easy way to do this, so the instructions that they give you over here about doing um, this via the circular pattern. It's real simple to do it that way, uh, by the way, but I wanted, wanted to show you both ways because it's an example for me to show you how to get an angle measured within something. So if I want to put a point right here, and I do right there, straight above my center point, right, and then lock it in and say, okay, I just want to put one point right there. If I want to do circular pattern, I come right here to circular pattern, click there. It wants me to select my geometry. So the geometry I want is this point right here. See, it has to turn white from green to white. Then I click there. Then I have to come over here. I have to physically come over here. It won't automatically jump over and select my axes that I want this to rotate around. And since I want this axis point here, all I have to do is click this circle. And when I do that, it puts points around here, but it says six. I only want five. Now, if I say five, it automatically figures out that between 360 degrees, that there must be 72 degrees between each point and evenly spaces these out automatically for me. And I can just click OK, and all my points are equally spread out there, 72 degrees. I can leave that alone, and, and that's the way to do it, and that's fine. But I also want to show you the other way to do it here. So I'll undo that. <clears throat> okay. And I'll take the point here and I'll just put another point over here, just for example. I'm not going to do this all the way around. So I'll, I'll put two points there. Okay, so I have two points. I want these points to be 72 degrees on this arc right here away from each other. Exactly. How do I do that? I can dimension that. I could dimension those points all the way around here because I can click on this axis point, this point right there, come through the center point that I want it to be the angle, the, the center of my angle. And then come see how it's trying to measure the distance here from here to here. It thinks that's what I want to do. No, but when I hit this other point, this third point, boom, it knows I'm trying to measure an angle. And I can click right there and just say 72. 
and bingo. It'll, it'll put those 72 degrees away from each other perfectly. And I could do another point here, here, all the way around 72, 72, 72. But I don't want to do that. I want to go back to do it the simple way, the way they did it, which is easier. Undo this point. Undo putting that point there. So I still have just this one point here. Again, I select circular pattern. I select my geometry first because that's what's highlighted in blue. I want to hit that one little dot, turn that white. Then I want to come over here and I have to click axis. It doesn't jump automatically over here. And since I want to go off this center point right here, I click this circle, which is the center of that axis. And then I correct the six to five and say, I only want five of them and say, okay. Now I have my five points I want to work with to do my five holes that I need to do over here, right? These are five different type of holes, notice, right? So let's, we'll read, I'll read these off to you as we go around. So we'll get this extruded. So this was four by two and a half and two and a half and then a one and one half inch thick or extrude. So I'll finish the sketch, right? And I'll come over here and I'll extrude this 1.5. Now, see, it's trying to extrude it this way, out this way for me, and it will put my sketch on the back. See, my cube over here says front. This is going to become my front. I don't want my sketch on the back. I want my sketch on the front. So I just change the direction of my extrude right there, and now my front and my sketch match up. My, my sketch is now on the front rather than being on the back because it just changed the direction of the extrude. Now, I'll say OK. Bingo. That's how I want it. Now, remember, that sketch is still there. I just simply come over here and, ex and expand this down, highlight that sketch, right click on it and say visibility. Now that sketch is visible. It turns color over here rather than black and white. And I can see it over here and now work with it in Inventor. And I say I want to do a first hole. Right. So I do this hole right here. And it says last use or whatever. I have to select the actual position of the hole I want to work on. Or if it comes up and it automatically does all five of them for you, you can click and hold your mouse key in and select, unselect, deselect those. It'll draw a red sort of box over that hole and it'll make it go away so you can isolate down to just the one you want to work on. But mine comes up correctly. And so I just have to select the hole I want because I have select position for actual placement of the hole. So I can click on that right there and puts a hole there that I last used. But I, I don't want this hole to have a seat like that. I don't want it to be counterboard, soffit face or counter sink. So I'll just say no seat and it automatically defaults to right here. A simple hole. It goes right up there to simple hole. I want a simple hole straight through. So you got to come down. Remember, inventor is right to left, top to bottom. So I want it. No seat on there at all. I want this first one because this first one right here is just a quarter of an inch hole that goes all the way through right there. That's it. Right. Okay. So I got that and it says 0.375 down here. No, I want that to backspace, backspace, say 2.25. And that's what I want. And there it puts my hole there simple right okay so i go back into the hole command it's going to go wants me to select my next position which is i want to find that other hole right over here bingo right there click and now i do want this one to be seated so let's read this one that's this hole right here i want this to be a uh, three eighths inch of a hole 0.375 all the way through thru through but i want a counter bore at the top of it a counter bore is straight the like box like this. This is a counter uh, sink, which is beveled. That's called a beveled edge. So a counter sink. So counter bore is just perpendicular. I want that counter bore to be three quarters of an inch and it only go a quarter of an inch deep. That's what this means. That's how you read that. Three quarters of an inch diameter, a quarter of an inch deep. So I come over here and I say, okay, I want this type of seat counter bore. I hover over it. You can tell me that's what I want. So that's what I want. I want it to go that direction that it's going correct. All right. And I want to go all the way through the uh, three quarters of an inch. I had already done this, so it kind of knows what I want already. But I need to change this down here to my 375. So now that's a three uh, quarters of an inch um, counter bore that only goes one quarter of an inch down. But my center hole goes all the way through at three eighths of an inch. Yes, that's what I want. Click OK. And there you see I have the beginnings of what I wanted with my actual object here, my, my circular plate, 
right? Now I have a habit of, I broke my habit actually. I'll tell you, I hit escape on my keyboard. Normally, before I start doing the whole commands while I'm still very early, I just extrude it, I come out and I save. I change this from part three to what I want it to be. And I'm having trouble right now getting to my Google file stream so I'm, I can save things down, copy things to local device right here. But I'll just do a file save as as if I could go to my uh, file stream Google Drive, but I can't see because I can't get my G drive to show up for some reason. It's kind of weird. So I'll just come right here for right now. It, it, this comes up when I put it in the home folder and save it as circular. Plate. There we go. Circular plate and then save my part. That way my work is saved and I can continue. So let's continue on with what we're doing here. As you can see, I need to fix my object. So I'm coming over here, going to orbit move it back like this a little bit there we go just like that that's the way i want it and now i can click out of orbit come right here right click on home and say set current view as home yep fit to view and bingo there it goes fits it to the view i can save that and because i changed the name and now i say see i changed the name here now i can always just come back up here and click right there and save it this is where i want it to be now I come back to hole pattern and I have a do it to do the next hole. This next hole is not a counter bore, it is a counter sink. And the counter sink also has an angle to it. So it says now I want it to be three quarters of an inch opening, but an 82 degrees angle, but three eighths of an inch all the way through again. So I said, okay, not a problem. Hole command can handle that. So I go to the hole command and I come over here to counter sink right there. Is saying what where you want that hole. I want that hole right there. I want this counter sunk right there, and I want it to go all the way through. It's going in the right direction, and it's 82 degrees. I can hover over it and click on it if I wanted to change it, but it's right, so I'll leave it alone. All of this is right, and so I don't have to enter anything. Bingo, there's my hole. And you can see it's beveled. It's on an angle. So that's my third one. So fourth, there are only two more to go. So next one is a little tricky one yeah here we go this has the one quarter inch 20 unc uh 1b all right uh, down three quarters of an inch right not even all the way through so what's that mean this is a threaded hole this is an ANSI standard american standard so if i go down here to the other instructions where it gets to that particular hole you can see i've done my other ones here I did the countersink for you already, and it shows you how to go through that one, right? That's simple. But when I get here to this tap, tapped hole right here, you're going to have to switch this stuff here to change to right here. It's going to be this type of hole. So instead of being a simple hole, you come all the way over here to tap, and then this information shows up down here. And you got to go by one of these. I think it's the size point. 0.25 gets you these information. So let's go through this together. I'm not too sure on remembering that right away. So once we select my hole, the hole I want to do now is that one right there. And I want this to be um, the one where we tapped it through. Oh yeah, I changed right here to tapped hole. So this is the, the key thing that you got to change here from a simple hole all the way through over here to tapped. And once you do that, notice how all of this changed down here. So I can go to my size right here. I told you that's going to be important. Go up to my 0.25. I think it's 0.25 right there and select that 1B. So all of this information now reads just like this information does over here. Quarter an inch, one quarter UNC, 1B. Uh, right-handed threads, all that sort of thing, because you can do left or right-handed threads direction. It says right right there. That's that's left-handed or right-handed. And that's how you get that done right there. And that's the hole I want to get done. It's right now giving me some bevel hole. So I don't want a bevel hole. I don't want this hole to have any seat whatsoever. So I take the seat off of that. So once I take the seat off of that, it changes that. So you see, it changes from that bevel to that to what I want. I want a tap hole that's straight like this with no seat 
uh, specially done to it all. So this has got to be right. This has got to be a no seat. But once you change to here on tap hole, this is the only time that information is going to appear right here. Then you have to click this particular size. The size dictates what you select in these, what's available to you to select in these two categories down here, designation and class. The size is what's the key to that. Then I want it right-handed. That's already selected. And then it says uh, full depth, and that is a no. It's not full depth. It's 0.75, right? And so I change this over here, these two to seven five, right? Because that's what my instruction said. It said seven five. It didn't say all the way through. It'll go back up. And so you can read that what that means on the drawing here. And it told me it says all of this information is right, but I want it to only go down 0.75. So as you can see, it's not going all the way through. It's only going down 0.75. And now I say, okay, and that's my hole. There it is. And as you can see, if I zoom in on it, there are the threads. It paints those in there. It doesn't really do the, what threads would do. It's just a picture in this drawing. But you can see it'll show you that picture all the way through that that's now a tapped hole that's threaded as if a screw could go in there. You see it's only going to go three quarters of an inch down, not all the way through. Okay. So that's that one. And now let's finish up with the last one that they tell us nothing about up here in this drawing. There's nothing about this hole. In class, I always get, Mr. Ware, that last hole, there's nothing, no instructions about it, which tells me that you guys don't read, but we all know that. So we come down here to this last one, and then we, Cleo, stop that squeaking. It's my dog playing with her chew toy. And then we come out here to this clearance hole. So in the clearance hole, once again, we come over here, off of simple hole to this type of hole. Well, it's not tap, but it's over here. So you got to pay attention to this. This sets up this information down here. So when you click the right one here, you get the right information to select from down here. And so it's a hex head bolt, uh, fastener type, half inch size, and it's fit and it's normal. Okay. And so again, ANSI, American Standard, right? So let's go over here to our drawing. And we know we want that to be um, a, a clearance hole. So we come here and we get out of orbit. Hold command again. It says select. So first thing I do is top to bottom, left to right. Select the hole I want. I want that one. Uh, doesn't need it to have a seat, no seat. But I want it to be a clearance hole, not a tapped hole. It did the last thing I did. So I want it clearance hole, no seat. And now I got the right information. Flat head, right? Size zero. No, not size zero. We need half inch. So hex head bolt right, half inch. So it's, this is not hex. Hex head bolt is right there. And now it says quarter inch. I go, nope, I need a half an inch. So half an inch is right here, right? And then normal. And so that's how you get this going in the right direction. It goes all the way through, does it? Let's check. And yeah, this normal goes all the way through, all right? There we go. And now I can leave that alone because that's the standard that goes along with this. So don't change that. So this is my half uh, hex head bolt, half inch, normal, all the way through in the right direction. Now I click OK and I'm done. So and then I can come back up here and right click and take the visibility off my sketch. And as you can see, when I hit my house here, go back to my normalized view, which I do, all five of my holes are there. I have done my circular plate. I just hit save up here and I have completed that project is saved. Now, save this to your thumb drive at home. If you don't, if your drive's not working, copy it to a local device, put a thumb drive in there so you save your work so it's persistent so they don't mess it up again because I, I put in a trouble ticket already. We're having issues with the Google Street file stream drive, but it's not showing up in the application. But we know it's there, but um, save it on your thumb drive for now or something at home. But that's how we do this particular piece, and that's enough for today, those two pieces. All right? Thank you.